Hi guys, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at National College of Ireland. And this short video is going to consider another example of a Boolean, a Boolean algebra or a Boolean function reduction. A Boolean algebra reduction. Okay? And the function that we're going to consider is the function f is equal to a ordered with b and with a and with a negated b. Okay, all to be negated. Okay. So the question is, what does this reduce down to? Okay. So anytime we have a function, yeah, okay, and we have terms tied together to a negation, I suppose the first thing that we should always do is we should always try to convert this negation or break this particular bar. Okay. So we have a rule which is known as the Morgan's law. Okay the Morgan's law and the Morgan's laws uh, help us to break these particular bars and what the Morgan's law says is that a and with b negated is the same as a or with b we break the bar okay, okay and we flip the sign so we break the bar to be a negated okay b negated okay and then we change ands to ors yeah so what we can actually do in this situation is you can see we have a negation across an and so this function is equivalent to a ord with b anded with a bar ord with b bar bar okay now what we know is we have another identity that tells us that a bar bar is equivalent to a okay and this is known as double negation Okay, so this now reduces down to a ord with b and it with a bar ord with b. Okay, brilliant. Now, at this particular stage, we do have another rule. Okay, it's called the distributive law that will help us to solve this particular problem. Yeah, okay. And it can look a little bit strange when we apply one of the applications of the distributive law. But at this stage, what we will do is we apply it in stages. Yeah, okay. So, what we'll do is we'll apply the a across this and on both of these terms here. Okay, so a has to be anded with a bar. A has to be anded with a bar. A has to be anded with b. It's across an or. So a has to be anded with b across the or. Okay, and then we have or b has to be anded with a bar. Okay, okay. Uh, and or we have b has to be ended with b okay brilliant okay now like earlier on in our previous video we know that we have another identity and the other identity says that a ended with a bar okay is equivalent to zero so what this reduces down to this term here is this term reduces to zero or low voltage we can't do anything with a b at this stage okay so what we'll do is we leave this as a ended with b or b and with a bar okay but what we also know is in relation to this term we also know that a and with a is equal to a okay uh, and this is called the indempotent law okay yeah, but it's a key identity and these identities will be typically given to you in an assessment so what we have is this has to be ordered with b and with b gives us b okay brilliant so just let's let's keep in mind as well that we could associate these two terms together. Let me just do this for I suppose uh, for for rigor. Okay. So if I associate the zero with the a and it with b, or the b and it with a bar or the b. Okay. The associative law here allows us to associate terms together across ors. Yeah. And now in this situation we know we have another rule that says that a or with zero is equal to a. And by the commutative law, that tells us then that zero ordered with a is equal to a. So anything ordered with anything ordered with zero is itself. So in this situation, we have zero ordered with a and with b. So this becomes a and with b. Okay, ordered with b and with a bar or b. Okay. Now let's maybe associate these two terms here together okay so when we associate these two terms here we have a and with b has to be ordered with we'll associate a and with a bar or b brilliant 
Okay, because what we have is we have something common between these two terms here. We have a B common, yeah? So let's just remind ourselves, because this might look a little bit complicated, yeah? Okay, but we know that we have an identity that says that says A anded with 1 is equal to A, or A anded with a high voltage is equal to A. So we can actually introduce a 1 here. So let's do that. This gives us A anded with B, or B anded with A bar, or B anded with a high voltage 1. Now, we have a common term, we can take the common term out, this becomes A and with B, or the common term is B, and a common term tied up by an AND, okay? and when we remove the B, what's left behind in this situation here, when we remove the B, what's left behind is an A bar, or when we remove the B here, what's left behind is a 1. Okay? And once again, we have an identity that says that A order 1 is equal to A. So anything order of one is equal to is equal to one. Sorry. Okay. So in this situation, this reduces down to a ended with b, or b ended with one. Brilliant. Okay. Now we can probably apply the commutative law. This becomes b ended with a, or b ended with one. This is the same as as a common term here. It's a b. We could take the b out. So the b is ended with what's left behind here is an a ordered with 1, and we know that anything ordered with 1 is simply equal to 1, so this becomes a B anded with 1, and anything anded with 1 is itself, so this becomes a B. Okay. So, there was a lot of applications of rules here. Uh, we relied on our experience, and I suppose being aware, needing to be aware of the fundamental identities. Uh, and we've already presented the fundamental identities in a previous video. Okay, uh, we have the commutative law, the associative law, the distributive law, the identity law, the negation law, the double negation law, the indepotent law, universal bound law, the absorption law, the complements of one and zero, and the Morgan's laws. And we relied on some of these laws here, some of these identities. We relied on the Morgan's laws. We relied on the double negation law. We relied on the negation law for ands. Uh, we also relied on the the adepotent law. Okay. Uh, we also lie relied on we also relied on the identity law for the or, the identity law for an and, the identity law for an or again here. Okay. And we used all of these to this particular reduction. Okay. And we also used the associative law. I probably did skip a few steps in here. I could have been a little bit more rigorous, yeah, and made a little few jumps. Uh, like I introduced, I associated these two terms here together. Okay, then I removed the commonalities. Uh, but I actually, when I removed the commonalities, I actually removed the association as well. Uh, I suppose to be rigorous, we probably should not do that. We probably should show every particular step, step by step, in the deductive logic as we're as we're applying it. Okay. So that was a quite a complicated uh, reduction there. There was a lot of steps in there. We could have just jumped down through the steps and sort of took things for granted. But I think it's good to be uh, as rigorous as possible. Okay, once again, my name is Jonathan Lambert uh, and I'm with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope this video was helpful. Okay, thank you.